foods, and vegetables, and substances recently, substances being vitamins, not those other illegal substances. <laughs> and today he's going to get up and talk to us about, I know not why, but I'm sure it will be interesting. With that, I'll introduce Dr. Jack. Thank you. Welcome. You are my fellow travelers as we journey through the 21st century, which is pretty impressive. Quick question for you. How long do you plan on living? I would argue that pretty much all of us probably had a number flash in our head. I don't think the number was 56. I don't <laughs> think the number was 67. I'd be willing to bet that in each person's head, it was probably the number 100, right? For some reason, I think we all think, ah, if I make it to 100, I'm doing pretty well, right? And I don't disagree with you, and we're in the 21st century. It sure seems, with all the amazing advances in two things, first off, modern medicine, and number two, wolf control, we should all be able to make it to be 100 eventually, right? But here's an interesting thought. We might be able to make it to be 100, but what kind of lifestyle do you want to have? Let's just say in the last 10 years, 90 to 100. Do you want to see yourself with a walker? Do you want to see yourself bedridden for the last 10 years? And I think, going out on a limb here, I'm going out on a limb, but I'm thinking we're all going to say, I want to be as healthy as I possibly can. I want to be as active as I possibly can. I want to have those last few years be as good as I feel right now, or maybe even better. I think that's fantastic. I think that's a great goal. Well, what can we do about that? Well, first off, go out and buy a whole new body, because obviously the one you have is all, no, okay, well, that's not gonna work out. Well, we, there should be something a little bit more practical that we can do. You know, it turns out that your mother had the solution to how you could live to be 100. What your mother said is, hey, listen, eat the right foods. <gasps> really? Now, you know, Dairy Queen does not serve the right foods. Burger King does not serve. Anything with a king in it, for that matter, apparently does not serve the right foods. We all know what kind of foods, you know, so certain foods, what are the best kind of foods? The best kind of foods have the right vitamins in them. We know vitamins are actually a very, very important thing that we need to take in. So what does a vitamin do? Well, a vitamin is a component of food that helps our body turn the food into energy. It's a little chemical, right? but it's a critical and very important type of chemical. There's a whole bunch of vitamins out there, right? There's A's, there's D's, there's B's, there's C's. It just goes on, right? It brings up an interesting question. I need vitamins, there's no question about that, but how much vitamins do I need? And if you're like me, a member of the Western world, the thought is, always, well, obviously more vitamins is better, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, back, back the truck up. I just, I, you know, I'm, I'm probably behind on my C, so bring a big truck of C and I'll work through it, you know, when I got spare time. So it turns out we don't need, on a daily basis, very much when it comes to vitamins. For vitamin A, we need about 600 micrograms. Micrograms, okay? For vitamin B1, we need 1.4 milligrams. For C, it's a little crazy. You ready for this? C is the biggest one. 75 milligrams. But right after that comes vitamin D. We only need 5 micrograms daily. And we're all taken care of. It turns out that if you take more than your recommended daily allowance of your vitamins, you're going to do grave harm to your body. So as we live in a world of mega vitamins, vitamin supplements, it turns out to your system, these are poison. To prove my point, I'd like to tell you about a few scientific studies that have been done. There was a scientific study that had people take beta carotene, beta carotene, that's like carrot stuff, right? For five to eight years. And scientists wrote down how everything was going with those people. What they found out is that the people who were taking the beta carotene were much more likely to die from either lung cancer or heart disease. This is crazy. They're taking, the only difference between the two groups was these people were taking carrot supplements. 
and they were dropping like flies. There was another test that was being done. Now, I don't know if you know how they do medical tests, but one medical test, they take a group of people, well, they take two groups of people who are basically identical. And then one group, they do whatever they're going to do to it, and the other group, they don't do it. It's a control group, right? And then they can measure the differences between the groups. Well, it turns out in the world of medical research, there's an ethical challenge that they face into it. If the group that you're doing things to starts to die, you have to stop the study. And they had to stop this study. What they were doing is they were uh, feeding them extra vitamins and they discovered that the risk of death from lung cancer for those who were taking the vitamins was 46% higher than for the control group. So basically, your risk of lung cancer death was almost twice as large as the control group. And just because they were taking extra vitamins. Another one was uh, they were feeding people A, C, E, and a little bit extra beta carotene. And they were taken to, pre to prevent intestinal cancers. And this sounds good, right? I don't want to get a cancer, so I'm going to take some extra vitamins. And it's going to fight it off. Problem was, people in the group were starting to have increased mortality. They were dying. And the last, uh, last one was uh, people with vascular disease or diabetes. When they boosted the amount of vitamin E, a very good vitamin for them to take, they started dropping dead from heart failure. So the question is, uh, you know, just from a casual observation, clearly something's wrong here. What's going on? And it turns out the answer to the question is a little thing called antioxidants. And if you've seen any advertising from the big vitamin manufacturers in I'd say the last four or five years, they all talk about antioxidants. So it turns out when we take food in, what happens is our body oxidizes the food as part of the digestive process. Now, during that oxidation process, a component is, called, is created, or something is created, it's called free radicals. And if you read the publications from all the big uh, vitamin manufacturers, they would lead you to believe that free radicals are the worst thing in the world. Free radicals cause heart disease, free radicals can cause cancer, free radicals are going to cause you to start to age, and free radicals are going to do a whole bunch of really bad things to you. So anything you can do to reduce the number of free radicals banging around in your body has got to be a good thing. Now they've done some studies and it turns out that people who eat fruits and vegetables as a significant portion of their diet have fewer free radicals in their body and they seem to live longer. You ever hear that Mediterranean diet thing? Okay. Well, stay with me on this one. So if eating some fruits and vegetables is a good thing, and by the way, I don't really have time to do that, okay, then eating a lot of fruit and vegetables must be a really good thing, right? Once again, I don't really have time to have all that fruit and vegetable stuff. So if you could take the good stuff, the vitamins, that are in fruits and vegetables and put it in a pill, that I could take once a day or twice a day or something like that, that obviously I will live to be a hundred, correct? Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work out that way. People die because they take vitamin supplements. So what's going on here? The engineer wants to know. The answer is, is that it turns out that perhaps free radicals aren't as bad as they've been made out to be. Free radicals actually play an important body part, play an important role in your body. What they do is they kill bacteria and they inhibit the growth of cancer cells. If you take a massive vitamin supplement, what's going to happen is in your body, the antioxidants and the free radicals are going to get out of balance. You're not going to have enough free radicals, which means your immune system is going to be weakened which means things like cancer cells are gonna go to town on you. And clearly, that's what these studies show. So, pick your multivitamin, what, one a day? Centrum Silver, come on, you know these names, right? They're going to kill you. <laughs> they don't mention that in the ads, but by the way, that's an added benefit. Please sign up tomorrow. Okay, now why? Don't we see any warnings? Why aren't these sold behind a lockbox? Why don't you need a permit to buy these? Well, a very interesting question. 
Back in 1972, the FDA announced that they were getting ready to do a study. The study was going to basically determine if any uh, vitamin that was sold that was over 150% of the recommended daily allotment would need to get certification, would actually have to prove that it wasn't going to harm you. Sounds like a fair enough thing to do. The vitamin industry discovered that this was going to happen, and they, they went crazy. So they found a senator, they passed a bill that prohibited the FDA from doing this stuff. However, if you take a look at any major medical association, none of them recommend the taking of mega vitamins because they understand this is bad for you. The Achilles heel of the vitamin industry is that taking in a massive amount of any vitamin is unnatural. It does not occur in nature. So thinking that you can do this and thinking that there'd be a good benefit from it is crazy thinking. So please hear my appeal. Eat good foods. Eat foods with lots of colors. Take in your daily recommended allotment of your vitamins and stay far, far away from the vitamins. Give us one minute for you to evaluate Dr. Jim's.